up, everyone? I'm Rich Mays Lopez. And I'm Brendan Dunn from Soul Collector. I'm Matt Welty, editor of Complex Sneakers. And this, of course, is Full Size Run. And as always, we're going to be breaking down the best and worst that happened in sneakers over the past week. But we have a very special guest with us today. Please introduce yourself. I'm Dan Gamash, better known as Mosh Customs. That's how you pronounce it, Mosh? Mosh, like a Mosh pit. <laughs> okay. What's the worst? Uh, Moshe. Yeah, that's what it was. Well, it comes from Gamash, which is my last name. Okay. So it's a derivative from that. Because gotcha. apparently two syllables was too long. Okay, we need to speak to your people and make it Moshe. Moshe. Okay. So in addition to covering all the stuff that we typically cover here in Full Size Run, being that we have Moshe <laughs> on with us today, we're going to be talking about the illustrious world of superstar customs. Does that sound good? Does that sound right? It's, it's become that way. It's wild. I still can't even believe how it's blown up, especially after this week. So before we get into that, i got to ask you, how did you even get involved in sneakers and sneaker culture, streetwear, stuff like that? So I was always an artist. My grandma was an art teacher. So like that artistic talent was always there. You know, when I was playing sports, I was in the in her like back room in the summer, like drawing sneakers, portraits from like Slam magazine and things like that. And also Soul Collector magazine. Of course. Right. Well, it wasn't I around that so. yet. Okay. I hope but, so. But Soul Collector actually put me on. I'm, I'm a. Okay. I'll get to You're that. You're welcome. Of course. You're welcome. So, thanks, Brent. We we were thinking of when we were putting the show together the sneaker, the custom that really kind of blew you up. And this is what we think. You could tell us whether yeah. we were right or not. It was the Iron Man Lebron. Was that the one that kind of broke the mold for you? I think. That in terms of the whole social media age too was mm -hmm. really big because I mean I think even going back to the Nerf LeBrons yes. was even a bigger one because when I did them you know obviously I did them because I couldn't get the KDs but I, I bought a pair of nines from Full Locker and just did it on my own and they blew up you know people really wanted them and when I did I realized I could actually make money doing this. So like how did this then come about with LeBron? After they won the first championship, his like concierge or his assistant had hit me up and wanted me to do some shoes for the championship to like celebrate for that so they had sent me shoes to do for lebron his kid his mom lambo you know her boyfriend <laughs> the real lambo like, oh yeah, yeah the real lambo, the real lambo. Yeah, show you, i was on a, i got on the phone with his mom talked to his mom you know it was you know, gr 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 great conversation yeah. and with, they sent me the shoes and what, i was supposed to give him shoes then so it was a full family pack oh yeah yeah it, LeBron, it was lebron his it Mom, was a um, Lambo, full size Bronny. run. Yeah, it was a full size Basically. run. Family full size run. Okay. So then, fast forward to the next year when the LeBron 10 came out, I did that Devastator um, Transformer colorway. Yep. And I had, you know, I wore them, and I guess LeBron had tweeted, "I need these." Yes, I remember that. Yeah, you know, he was obviously hyped and wanted to, you know, Nike set up the shoes and whatever. And then I, again, I did a run of those for customers, and he was like, "Oh, you know what?" He goes, "You know, I really want to do a, something just for me, you know, one on one, which is totally understandable." So talking, he wanted to do an Iron Man shoe. They already made the shoes two days before I flew out to Houston, and I literally just went to town on them. So I, you know, I did them, and then I did a, the matching case. Literally went to Home Depot and went and bought a case to go paint that as well. And wow. then flying out to um, flew to Houston. We set up, went to the hotel, and literally I'm sitting in the hotel lobby. I see Drake walk by. I see Tim Duncan and his big jeans, and you know, it was it was a, it was the whole, you know the team hotel and like celebrity stuff, and you know, we knew where they were. So it was it was a great experience. Yeah. You do a bit of work with the Minnesota Vikings. Yeah. Um, yep. Gang. Maybe a fan of the team. Yeah. <laughs> you know, a little, little, little bit of a fan. Yeah. We've seen you making Stefan Diggs cleats. Uh, yeah. He may have had like a little bit of a moment last he, week. He, he did a thing. He may, he may have made yeah. a catch yeah. in a mm -hmm. game that uh, t blew up Twitter wearing some... Uh, Dirty Sprite cleats. Oh man! It's does he put uh, lean in the in the cooler? Oh, I, I think he does. Did you dip your pen in lean for this? Oh yes. Okay. Oh, oh, definitely. But <laughs> it still reeked of, of activists when I was bringing them to him. <laughs> oh, it's a good show. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh no, nothing but the best for him, man. Uh, but uh, speaking of that, though, so what was it like the moment that he made that catch and scored the game-winning playoff touchdown in the cleats that you made uh, for him? Can you hear my voice? Like, it's still gone from me screaming. Yeah. It, it, it was wild because, you know, I mean, as a Vikings fan, mm -hmm. we're used to losing. You know, first of all, it's my man who caught the pass, and it was just the most improbable thing you could think of. You know, and then, like you said, it's memes everywhere. Speaking of uh, cleats for the Vikings, you brought something. You got for, something for us today? Yeah. I, you, got, you got something I for us today. Cooking. You cooking already? Yeah, I had. Okay. I got no choice. Oh. What do we so, have here? So these are from my man Jarius Wright, and he's actually the guy who I did my first pair of Vikings cleats for. I met him. May and, I? Yep. As we know, they're playing Philly. Yes. So he has a little message for the free Meek Mill. We always try to like, if we're there away, to do a story that's cognizant to where they're playing. Yeah. So like when I did Diggs's cleats in in uh, Seattle, we did the Starbucks because they're based in Seattle. He didn't know they're based in Seattle. I had, I had to tell him. He was like, did you know that Starbucks and see? I'm like, yeah, dude, that's why I made them. <laughs> How long does something like this take for you to make? This is a day. 
I took. And like, the thing is, you, you learn how to become efficient. You know, yeah. you just, so you have no choice. But like, you this know, you, dope. speaking of this though, this this really wouldn't even been possible, you know, a few years ago because the NFL's God, no. cleat policy, finding players, only letting them do it, you know, handful Free of game. time. Yep. Now it seems that they've kind of loosened yeah, up a the, little bit. Yeah. Uh, how much has that helped you? What do you think about it? It certainly helps, you know, and obviously, you know, a lot of these guys, they're still a little afraid to get fined because there's still guidelines to go across. Yeah. You really? Know, yeah. Yeah. You still have to kind of. It's about with the me. logo, right? You, you yeah, want to make yeah, sure the logo No copyrighted pops. stuff, obviously. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, like, okay. when I did the pair, the Wheel of Fortune pair for Diggs, he got fined. Because oh, I figure, gotcha. I just assumed that Goodell was a Jeopardy fan. Does he, he make you pay for it? Him. What? No, no, no. He, <laughs> Do you get a phone call from these guys like, yo, fuck you, Mosh? You're oh, just no. Like, they know, they know, they know what's they know what's happening. But like, you know, usually when we have the little consultation during the week, I'm like, all right, you know, do you want to get fined? Because you know, if it, if it wasn't for some of these crazy cleats, you know, I, I think that you know, it definitely helps the visibility for some of these guys. You know, because at, at the end of the day, I'll be honest with you, like. Diggs is a stud, but like a lot of people didn't know know much about him until this big moment happened. It's got nothing right. to do with the cleats, but you know now people know who the guy is. Yeah. I think yeah. one of the interesting thing with all these custom sneakers is now it's almost like the stuff that brands are doing. It's it's a lot like these custom designs. So we've we've heard a lot about this Adidas X Dragon Ball Z collaboration oh, coming yeah. out soon. Like that's something that a customizer would have done five years ago. Uh, another one is the Levi's X Air Jordan Four. That's yeah. a shoe that you could have seen someone like Mosh making. What do you think about this trend where brands are maybe maybe kind of picking up on some of the cues from your scene? Well, it's great because I mean I've been I've been fortunate enough to work with a lot of the brands. You know, mm -hmm. on like one-off projects. Like I work with Adidas and I work with Nike and Jordan mm -hmm. on things. You, you don't know. think they're jacking your swag a little bit though? I get paid for some of the swag. No, 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 no. <laughs> but no not the shit that you do. No, but I'm no. saying like the stuff that they do. Like, oh, fuck it. Like, we're going to make our inline singers look like a custom yeah. because that's what's hot. And well, they're taking money out of your pocket, basically. Yes and no. Because at the end of the day, it's, you know, I design things to be a one off for the most part. Somebody wants something and, and that's what it's for. Uh, has there ever been a moment where you made something and then there was something way too similar that a brand did and you oh, thought yeah. they took my idea. No, of course. But I mean, again, it, I can't you be too... Do you want to yeah, or... put them on blast? No, I won't because at the end of the day, it's, you know, I still wish to work with them. Can I do it? Oh. Now, we, we've seen the, the Levi's Jordan 4 being customized right. by select people. Right. And <laughs> yeah. you're already like, you're already oh. looking at me in a certain way. <laughs> <laughs> what, are you, what are your thoughts on, I guess, brands cust uh, commissioning customizers to do this stuff but, and it, go ahead. But they're not customizers. Okay. Like, here, like here's the thing. Like, like I, I kind of put the, the, the customizing has kind of become like a really broad word. Okay. Term. Okay. Like, I feel like there's artists, there's shoemakers, and then there's the customizers. Yeah, shouts to shoe surgeon Dom. He's, he's amazing work. Mm -hmm. He's, a, he creates shoes. That's what mm -hmm. he does. He's like a cobbler rather yeah. than like. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. what he studied as. Yeah. And he's amazing. He's great at what he does. Okay. But I'm like, interested in this, this beef. Well, yeah. Well, no, it's not a beef at all. Well, I kind of feel like they kind of go into subcategories now. I mean, okay. There's people that just flat out do artwork on shoes, and which is fine. And what are those people? Those are the artists. Okay. And okay, then customizers okay. are ones that do designs that are still very, um, aware of the lines of the shoes and making it work for the shoe. Got it. Cause like, and I think my job is like, when a customer comes to me with a design or an idea, my job is to either scale it back or reel them in or suggest a better shoe to work it on. Because at the end of the day, if I do that custom and he says, oh, Mosh did it, it looks like shit, that's gonna be like, oh, So damn. if someone hits you up with a pair of Air Force Ones and they're like, I want Scarface on the tongue, is that like, uh, is that like, dude, it's not 2005 anymore? Why are you blowing my fucking custom? <laughs> is the stuff that these, not customizers doing, is that good? The Levi stuff? What I've seen, not really. Okay. Because here's the thing. I mean, art is, it, I say art because art's really, really subjective. Sure. And there's sh shit that people think is awesome that I'm like, I don't get it. Mm -hmm. But then there's things that I do. People are like, what, what, what's he doing? So like, there's no like, what's right, what's wrong with it. Okay. But I mean, just what I've seen, I haven't been a fan of it. But objectively speaking, that shit is whack. <laughs> but I kind of feel like you know what separates the good people and the bad people is just the creativity. In yeah. addition to your work with with people on the court or the gridiron, you work with a lot of superstars in the ring. Yeah, in WWE. WWE. Yep. One big one is Shane McMahon, who is an alum of sneaker shopping. Yes. Yep. How did you make that transition to now this format where you're doing WWE? Also, oh, is, is wrestling real? <laughs> this is an important uh, question. The outcome is predetermined, but the things they do is real. Interesting. You just cracked the code for us. Yeah, okay. that's true. It, it's it's entertainment. It's a choreographed thing. They're actors that are really, really athletic. So it's right. fake, huh? 
Yeah, you're big. <laughs> so how does this happen now? So uh, actually, it started with a guy from Dime Magazine who I did a, a thing with uh, Josh, and I was Josh Gunhoff. Yep. So linked up and already found that he was a fan of my work. You know, he's a sneaker guy and whatever. I'm trying to think of who wore shoes at that time, and Nikki Bella was the first person I thought of because she wore usually yeah, like you know Air Forces or Dunks or whatever. So. SummerSlam, I think it was like it was two or three years ago. Full disclosure, I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, that's right. all, the, all that's this right. wrestling stuff. No, when, when, <laughs> no when, that's fine. When you're done, you'll get educated. So that's, it's cool. Very beautiful girl. John Cena's girlfriend. You know who John Cena is. That I do know. Yeah, he's I'm him. familiar. He's small. Him. Yes. He's small. Okay. Can we talk about someone that I do know? Yeah. Lonzo Ball. Yeah. LeVar Ball. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We, uh, or I'm going to speak for myself. I'm a huge... I know you're an advocate. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Which yeah. means that my gospel is making the rounds. Yeah. You had the chance to work with the Ball family. Yep. And this is the Christmas the edition Christmas Grinch Bear. for yep. uh, LeVar Ball Zotus. How the hell did that happen? This one's going to get me excited. All right. Well, first of all, the ZO2 is actually the brand black shoes. Is though. it ZO2? Yeah. Or, yeah, the ZO2 remix. Oh. So, but did, this, did this the check come time? from Skechers? You spoke about no. this briefly. Okay. We spoke about this briefly. Okay, Virgil Abloh. So I actually was working with the, their their TV show that they're doing. Oh, on, on the Ball family. Yeah, on the Ball family. Ball family. Yeah. family. Yeah. But how'd you make this connection though? It was th- it was through the production company. And this was the oh. first time you ever worked with Skechers. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you said something about Brand Black. <laughs> well, yeah, Let's Brand, go back there. Well, yeah, because when obviously when the first shoe came out, it, it didn't work out. They built, you know, they built it oh, okay, aesthetically, right, right. but it wasn't a performance shoe. So they had the company that does Brand Black shoes Sketches, right. redo them. Right. Okay. Well, have you have you ever bought a Brand Black shoe? Like <laughs> no. the Brand Jennings shoes? They're actually decent ball shoes. Okay. Shout Brand Black. I mean, they're not. He gets buckets. Shoes. He gets buckets. Supposedly. Gets buckets? Yeah, you, but not supposedly. Brand Black sneakers. Supposedly, but we can go do this right the, fucking now. The brand black, One day we will. The Brand Black uh, rare metals are actually a good balling shoe. Okay. All right. So how this happened was. How did this concept? Come? They wanted obviously wanted to do something for Christmas. So I was talking. <laughs> I was talking to Alonzo about what he wanted. He obviously loved the Grinch, and you know some people don't like the Jim Carrey version, which is fine. I mean, I'm an OG guy too. But as an artist, I'm like I can paint that, so I'm going to. Yeah. What's What's Lavar like? Have you? Have he's you... A, yeah, I have met him. He's exactly what he is on TV. Really? Yeah, he's exactly. Damn. Just as just not as unlike advertised. us. Right. <laughs> yeah. No, he's like, and you know, can he, I meet him? Can you set this up somehow? If they come back. It'd, it'd be awesome. There's see. another big uh, guy that you made sneakers for. That uh, the first time we met, right? Uh, we had a conversation about some sneakers you made for one Mr. Kanye West. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For uh, Father's Day, yep. I believe you made the Ultra Boost. Yep. When we had previously spoken, you had told me that Adidas wasn't letting Kanye wear the sneakers. Um, I knew it was this cover for you. Uh, I, knew I knew it. But an Adidas employee had told you that Adidas wasn't letting Kanye wear the shoes because they didn't want him to wear product that wasn't, you know, whatever right. in, in, in public. And you had made a comment to me saying, come on, Wex. Uh, jo- as a joke, yeah. Yeah, yeah, l- yeah. let him wear it. As it happened, Wex sent me a DM, not to put it out there. Wow, very you're angry. really just reading your DMs out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dropping DM ahead. leaves. Very angry that we had this conversation and it was published on the website, that it was not true. Click sell, though. Is it true? Is it, was it, is it true? Is, can we have we gotten to the bottom of this? Did, not was really. Kanye I mean, really wearing the, your sneakers? For, I heard he, he wore them. That's, that's what I heard. And, you know, unfortunately, I didn't get pictures of them, so, it's, you know, it's usually if pictures didn't happen, didn't happen. But I, I was told he was, that he did wear them. And obviously, I'm being very political about it because I don't really know what happened now. Yeah. You know, who knows? All we know is what happened in Matt Welty's DMs. That's it. It went down oh. in which the are, DMs. Which are, which are a very dark place, I assume. Shout out to Wex. <laughs> no, I love you. I love you, man. I want to use the word love. I want to talk about something that you already touched on, right? Mm-hmm. I have always thought that customs are fucking terrible. Mm-hmm. Right? Oh, there's a lot of them. But let me explain. let me explain why. First, I kind of always thought that customs were for swagless people. Mm-hmm trying to, who couldn't put a fit together with what they had, and I was like, okay, well, I, need, I actually need a red sneaker, or I need a blue sneaker, or I need whatever, so I'm gonna draw or color on the sneaker so it matches my fit, right? Wait, are you calling right. Bobito swagless? Hold up, come on, never. Then what really pissed me off is there was a time in sneaker blogging history where we would see like 10 fucking custom posts a day. Thanks to this guy right here. And were you part of that? Was that, was that you? <laughs> it's just falling orders, man. <laughs> <laughs> and they were all fucking terrible. And they dude. were all phone you know calls. I mean? yeah, and too. it was there, like there was really a lot of bad there was, shit. There was a run. Now I know what you're doing is different because it's kind of commissioned artwork. But do you think that these people who are doing these fucking terrible customs are messing up like your shit? Are they fucking up the game? Like yes and no. Because here's the thing. Like uh, obviously with our social media, it's like a perception is reality kind of thing. People can really dot their pictures and you know have a really shitty paint job look good with a filter. People get encouraged by 
you know, they want to be famous. They want to be seen. They want to get attention. And, you There's know, nothing I want more. Oh, I know. Well, and that that much that, that, that much that screams attention though. Guilty. Yeah. Did you, you customize his mustache? Yeah, I could. <laughs> <laughs> they got dyes for it. What are you seeing? Huh? What are you seeing? Look, well, we could do a little Raleigh fingers action. Mm. A little dye. Can you make his yeah. mustache look like a black cement three? I could take the razors and do like, like the elephant print through it. <laughs> like, oh, I, but no, I, I think that you know, with everything that's good, there's there's bad pe- things. You know, at the time that you were talking about when you know blogs were really giving people attention for really shitty customs. Yes. It encouraged them. The customer is usually right, and it's usually my job to be like, okay, how do I not make this whack? And that's that's my that's kind of the struggle. But you have customers. These people just don't throwing shit against the wall. Right. Basically. Yeah. I mean, and, and it happens. You know. But like again, I always consider what I do is almost being like a tattoo artist. Someone comes with a really crazy idea, and you gotta know what's gonna work and what not, what gotcha. won't. Dope. Yeah. I want you know, the thing about whack customs is that we almost lost Matt Wealthy to a to a whack custom. <laughs> right, Matt. Uh. <laughs> Why did this custom make you want to one yourself? Uh, because it sucks. <laughs> Who does? So, uh, as the story goes, it was uh, it was like a few days after Thanksgiving. It was a cold day. Yeah, I was. I saw this come up on my feed, posted on Soul Collector. And you um, weren't happy. No, and I said, if I'm not on the show next week, i have off myself after seeing these. And Kit Casso, who made the shoes, who made the shoes, who was also your contemporary, right? Was is that was that a good way to put it? Yes. Told me good riddance, and he also, he's and also verified. He's got the blue check, so that already he kind of got you there. I'm and right. I'd rather cash a check than have a blue check. Mm. Ooh. And I hit him with, "Man, you just got to be honest and realize that conceptually, a pair of Air Jordan football cleats painted like an Arizona green tea can isn't very good. It's just the fact that you put a fucking I did not. You didn't, but someone did, who's got paid tons of money for it. Put a fucking Arizona green tea on a Air Jordan 13 cleat. Mm. This is this is what he said back to you. He said Matthew J. Welty with the blue check. He's got a blue check by his name. Let's not mm-hmm. forget that. He said it's not about Jordan brand sneakers. It's about the concept of him playing in Arizona. Now you can go fuck yourself. <laughs> if your buddy Mosh would have done it, his dick would have been sucked. You have five likes on your comment, and he has 39 likes on mm. his comment. So. The people have kind of spoken on that one. I mean, he also has 500,000 Instagram followers who see his comment he, pop up in their feet. But he also said that you would perform fellatio on a grown man if he had done it. Nope. <laughs> what do you think yeah. about no, but this? I get, I well, get I the... wouldn't have let a man do fellatio on me either. <laughs> I, I well. get the argument. You know, it's it's the same thing that Masha's saying here to some extent, right? If, if someone, if this is what somebody wants, who are you to say no? At the end of the day, I mean, I, I get the storytelling because, I mean, obviously the Arizona thing. I do things to tie together. Yeah. I know you ate customs for the most part. Yeah, I mean, but I, I mean, we we go way back. We know yeah. that. And you said you can give me shit. So I mean, yeah, he just don't like me. So it is what it is. He doesn't like you. Well, so there's know. customs beef here. Not Why really. is this? No, it's not beef. I think it's just because it, you know when people started, like I was always like a people think of custom shoes. I was one of the names. Sure. So I kind of feel like you know, it, just like when I started doing, it, I saw someone doing. I could do better than that. So it's a, it's a competition. At the end of the day, it's kind of like. When you're doing good, I don't really care about anyone else doing good. Like, I'm happy to see it. Does the Arizona tea cleat suck? Not for what it was for. If it was just random, yeah. But, <laughs> no, no, no. If it was just, like, like some, some dude down on 34th Street wants a pair of Arizona shoes, that's weird. But, I mean, it makes sense for what he's doing. Fair like, like, I've done sponge all cleats, and we all know how that went. <laughs> These are a piece of lore. Our uh, FSR, FSR history. Yeah. FSR history. by Mosh. Yeah. You ended up doing these cleats for digs. Right. Uh, Obviously. Wait, which came first? Though I was asked to do those first. Okay, okay. And well, I was kind of already had the colors mixed. You know, I hit up digs. It goes every week. We're always trying to think of what the hell we're gonna do. And they yeah. were they were away that week, so we always try to do lighter colors to go with the white uniforms. And you know, you kind of think about you know we we all know how stupid SpongeBob is. You know, and now and yeah, we think about the tie-ins with the memes and yeah, obviously the fake dub zeros and things like that. And I was like, yo, I'm like, I'm just trying to think of things that are gonna get him attention because at the end of the day, I mean. You guys, he's a grown man with SpongeBob on his feet <laughs> catching touchdowns. <laughs> so he was like, "Are you sure?" I'm like, "I'm gonna tell you right now." I'm like, "These are gonna cross over." I was like, "Remember the Starbucks ones when they crossed over?" And he's like, "You know," and he's like, "What do you mean by crossover?" I'm like, "Well, I was like mainstream. You know, they're on BuzzFeed. The MSN. All, yeah, mm-hmm. like all those you know things that have no idea what we're talking about. Like, oh, he paints sneakers. You know, like whatever. <laughs> I knew it was gonna be one of those because it's so stupid that whatever. And he was like. All right, so like I did him, and he was just like, I should have never questioned you. Yeah. And helps his brand, helps my brand, everybody wins. Yeah. Each week we like to look at the singers that are dropping and pick singers that we will cop or drop. I'm dropping this week the Levi's Air Jordan 4, which you spoke about several times mm-hmm. on the show. I think that this is unnecessary and dated. We're off that. 
I disagree. Do you? I, I love this shoe. Really? I, this is the type of shoe I would normally hate, but I think this looks so good. I don't know if I like the denim on the midsole, and I'm waiting for the black pair. The black pair I'll be with. This but is not good. I don't like Air Jordans, and I like this shoe. All right. I, I do like them. I think the, the black pair will be I'm dope. I'm severely outnumbered here. The black, no, the, the black pair will be dope, but I think it's going to remind me too much of the Carhartt M&Ms, because it's going to be Dude. like that. The real. red tab on the shoe, to me, is like such an awesome detail. I think, I think they, did that, they did that on... Um, one of the joints in the back, the dunk or some shit like that. It looks good. It looks good. Anyway, my my cop of the week. Is a little funny though. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I like that. My cop of the week, this uh, Italy Gold Nike Air Max 97. I'm still kicking myself for not picking up a pair of the Gold 97s last year. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get these because they're Europe only, but I may be uh, reaching out to some people. My my cop of the week, uh, surprise, 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 is the Concepts uh, New Balance 991.5 Lake Havasu. This shoe is important in the sense that it's the first time that an American retailer has ever done a collaboration on a Made in England uh, New Balance. They had supposedly taken like the one of the bridges in London and rebuilt it in Lake Havasu, so they wanted to tie both of it together. This is a good sneaker. All right, uh, last segment here we want to dip into our mailbag and take one user submitted question that we will have Mosh answer here. Mosh, the question for you is, could the Air Max 270 be Nike's most important shoe of 2018? I feel like it's going to be kind of like how the Vapor Max was for last year. I think that, that level? I think it is. I think they're building up a lot. There's a shit ton of colorways coming out, mm -hmm. which is great. And I mean, I think everyone complains about how small the air bubbles have been. And mm -hmm. they're like, Nike's like, all right, here's a massive air bubble. Hold that. And I think that's gonna. I think that's how it is. I think there's, you know, so I don't like the, the engineer mesh too much. I mm -hmm. wish it was a little more fly knit, but I think know, there is a fly knit. I'm sure there out. will be. I'm sure there will be. There's to, fly knit everything. To me, this sneaker screams Long Island shocks. <laughs> screams Air Max right. Ltd. Screams like, champs sport exclusive. But they'll still sell a million pairs of them. No, right? they will. But I don't think that like the space that we. Occupy that this is really a sneaker for that. The cool guy space? <laughs> yeah, this is the cool guy table. That shoe can't fucking sit with us. Speaking of cool guys, Mosh, you have the Free Make Bill joint coming up. Yep. You have another joint for Stefan Diggs, but what should we look for you to come out of the Mosh factory in the future? Um, I'm actually working on a Ewing collab, too. Dope. Yeah. Which will be dropping? Uh, be end of the year. Dope. We're, we're, Dope. we're still ironing all this stuff out. And on Instagram though. and Twitter? Mosh 275. Mosh 275. It's my weight class. No. <laughs> <laughs> that was full size run with the man Mosh, uh, customizer extraordinaire, customizer to the stars. I'm Rich Mays Lopez. I'm Brendan Dunn from Soul Collector. I'm Matt Welty, editor of Complex Sneakers. Till next time, y'all. Peace. Listen, this is important. I need you to subscribe. They're going to make me keep wearing these fake Skechers Yeezys until we hit 50,000 subscribers. So please, subscribe to Soul Collector on YouTube. Now. <laughs>